welcome back Dr. Tom Royer to learn about trapping and monitoring. Well Tom, last time we visited we talked about scouting and there's a lot of great tools in our IPM toolbox to help us with the monitoring. That's right, uh, we're going to talk about several here. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times you want to know when a pest is starting to become active so that you can target a control if you need it at the exact time when it's going to be most vulnerable. Here's an example over here mm -hmm. of uh, what we call double-sided sticky trap that we can use for helping to control scale problem if you have. Scales are really difficult to control unless mm -hmm. you catch them when the crawlers are actually moving into the plant and establishing in new places. If you put some tape on a branch and say use this as a sentinel branch, you can actually, as a crawlers crawl across the tape, they get stuck there and you can tell, oh, they're out right now. This is a time to, maybe the best time to try and control them because they're out moving around trying to reestablish an, a new infestation. Excellent. And then there's other traps yes. that we can put out um, and use some pheromone lures to draw yes. them in. Uh, use some type of attractant, whether it's a, 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 a sex pheromone that the, the female releases to draw in males or just some kind of floral attractant. But the whole idea is, is that when those um, insects are active, they come, they're attracted to that plant, you know they're active at this time and uh, maybe within the next week or two they're going to be laying eggs and mm -hmm. so this is a time to start preparing to, to maybe make a control. And you can watch those numbers and see if they're building up exactly. to a point where you need to control exactly. or if they're staying yes. low. So what's this trap called? This is a delta trap mm -hmm. and uh, we put uh, a pheromone on top of here and then on the inside you just uh, you can take out um, a sticky bottom mm -hmm. and whatever you have trapped there and whatever we're attracting and you can put a new one in and replace it every few weeks so that you can see uh, how the numbers are changing from uh, t from one time to the next. Now there's also some other traps designed for specific pest problems. We have mm -hmm. a uh, apple maggot trap for yes. example. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah those are, are specific uh, um, for apple maggot. Uh, the color draws the apple maggots in and you know they're out uh, piercing the, the plants or laying eggs in the plants and that's the time to get control of them. Okay. What about in our vegetable garden? Uh, you know, we talked about trapping and monitoring. I guess with the with a couple of those traps, like you, one of those that you have in the vegetable garden, you can actually use the trap to trap out an insect, to actually okay. take it out. Apple maggot traps are the same way. You can actually help remove them from so that they're not causing a problem. So to do that you need to have a greater number of traps? Yeah, you have okay. to make sure that they're spread out and you got quite a few numbers so that you're trapping out the whole population. The one I have is for cucumber beetles mm -hmm. uh, in our vegetable garden and it works pretty much the same way as your apple maggot trap. Right. It has a scent lure and a sticky surface. Mm -hmm. but I, I know it works for monitoring. I haven't tried it yet. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have to test it out. Sure. Uh, there's another trap we can use just for monitoring purposes in our vegetable garden that's also a, a mm -hmm. sticky card. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sticky cards work great. Just Sometimes it's just the color that actually attracts the insect and you can get an idea of what is going on. Uh, you don't necessarily have to have a lure. Sometimes it's just the insects mm -hmm. like thrips or something are attracted to a certain color. Okay. Now do these also draw in beneficial insects? They can. You okay. know, if uh, you have to be careful of that, but um, typically you're uh, with the attractants, they're usually pretty specific to an insect um, that you're going after, and so they're not going to be bringing in a lot of things that you don't want to trap out. Okay. Now you have another tool that you brought along, and we tend to talk about it in mm -hmm. among the traps, although it's a little bit different. Tell yes. us about this. Well, this is uh, mm -hmm. something that can be used in an orchard. Uh, this is an, maybe an example of a, a coddling moth mating disruption trap, and you buy a bunch of these and put them on uh, the whole orchard, uh, distribute them out through the whole orchard, and they release so much pheromone that the, that the males can't find a female to mate with and you actually disrupt the mating and egg laying process uh, in a field. So we're confusing them through scent. It's too much confusing, scent. yep, <laughs> too much. Too much is too, a good, uh, not a good thing for those insects. And I brought one last trap to look at as an example of maybe something we don't want to use. Uh, well, yeah, a lot of people, uh, you'll see in the popular press, buy a Japanese beetle trap. 
And th what I always tell uh, producers is to give it to your neighbors so that you're drawing <laughs> the insects to your neighbors and keeping them out of your garden because mm -hmm. these typically will bring in maybe more insects than you would have had if you hadn't had the, the lure there. So sometimes you might want to avoid um, like something Japanese. like a Japanese beetle trap. All right. Well, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to experiment with these tools in our IPM garden. Thank you.